welcome back to How to Wiz IQ Basic Training. This is number 203-203, Scheduling a Public Class. Okay, so let's get right back into it. Remember, we would have gone to teach, schedule a class, and this time we're going to do a public demonstration. Now, uh, we've already looked at doing recurring class. Now, that's for a premium membership. Uh, keywords are the same. Let's just say English. Um, about the class is the same. Remember, we can always go in and add more information later. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. Uh, class presenter. Remember, this is an organizational account, so there can be different class presenters that I would do, but you don't need to know about that. Here we go. Everything is almost exactly the same, but now we click on the Anyone Public. Remember now, WizIQ needs to approve these. Once you've done several, then that time will shorten down, so allow at least a couple of days, and truthfully, to advertise and for people to see it coming, you would want to be out there a week ahead. All right. We don't have a choice now to record the class because it's a public class and we need to have those that information available for other people to see if there's ever any question about what went on, whether it was proper or not. Okay, now if we go to add more, this button's always been available. We didn't look at it every time, but here we can set a class fee if we want. Let's set it at one dollar. Um, we can change the class time. This is for if you have a course um, set up and you can put a, a class right into a course so that people would be automatically signed up. Uh, show attendees, yes, and that's it. Schedule and continue. Oh, it needed more words again. All right, let's say we fix that and let's look at my classes now. All right, now this is an example so that you can see what it would look like. When I go to my stuff, my classes, this is the page I see, so upcoming classes. There's always more, but if we want to look at this one in particular, if we click on that, we get a closer look. Here, there's more information. Uh, this one I sent in a, a while back, so we've already invited a lot of people. Let's look at the attendance of who's coming. This Most of this information is also available after the class, so that you can change who has recording access and who doesn't type of thing. I don't know that that's important for us, but um, we also can see who we're still waiting to get a reply from. Oops, this is a big one I forgot. Let's jump to... Well, I don't know that we need to look at a lot more here. It's that simple. It's a very similar interface. Let's see what someone who's going to attend um, interface might look like. So this is a, another one of my accounts, and now we see, oh look, on my, on my home page, I can see a, um, a new entry because I follow the EduPunk, therefore I'm informed of any of their classes. I can look at the details here, or I can go to my stuff, my classes, and because I was invited, it's here also. So I could register on the class page or I could register right here because I've already been invited. So I just click register and that's all it takes. Well, it looks like I do have an extra step. I have to join the class here. Okay, so this happens to be, I think, the EduPunks, but anyway, I can join the class from here and that's about it always skip this step. I do anyway. I don't care about it. <laughs> and then it's ready to be launched. Now if we go back to my classes, it's no longer in the invitations. It's actually in the live and upcoming classes that I've already scheduled myself for. And I will receive a um, notice as a attendee. I know that got kind of confusing, but that's it for today. Um, the next one we're going to do is content library, and then we'll get into the fun stuff using the virtual classroom. Bye-bye.